the captain of the guard told me there was a fight with Valerie. The storyteller lowers his head sorrowfully. Alas, this is true. Believe me, I did not want a fight, but my fool curiosity wounded Valerie's pride. I will apologize to her the first chance I get. What was this fight about? I asked Valerie if she still had anything related to the Eternal Rose Order from back when she was a novice. An innocent question, but she took it as impudence or insult. Please don't blame her. I am to blame for what happened. Uh, do you think Valerie has been acting strange lately? What can I say? We are not that close. She has no interest in the things that matter to me and I. I prefer the world of ancient heroes and old legends, not the fuss that's all around us here and now. So I don't have an answer to your question. But I know that those who consider Valerie a close companion may be hurt by her words. Yesterday I spoke yesterday I spoke with Lindsay. When I mentioned Valerie, I heard sorrow and tears in her voice. Maybe the tireless chronicler is having a tough time for the very same reason that you honored me with your visit today. Thank you, Storyteller. That is all I wanted to know. Storyteller nods. A halfling girl with tousled hair wearing a dusty traveler's outfit sits chewing the tip of her quill. Just a moment. How should I put this? Oh, I know. She, cribbled, she scribbles something quickly in a notebook, scrawled with verse, raises her eyes, and gives you a bright smile. Oh, hi. Have you noticed anything strange about Valerie lately? Lindsay lingers and sighs dully. I had a fight with her. A big one. Well, I wanted to talk to her about the best way to describe her hair color in the book, and she... Lindsay pouts. She said my book is trash. I'd be no better if I busied my time with... Ugh, I won't even repeat it. She shouldn't have said that. Yeah, but wait, Lindsay didn't pick on her at all. What are you talking about? Good God, these options are terrible. Very well. She shouldn't have said that, but perhaps you shouldn't have picked on her. Lindsay lowers her head sorrowfully. You're probably right. But I'm doing it for her, you know? To be honest, Valerie hasn't been herself lately. She's usually polite, though she can be cold at times. But now it's like she's changed. It's all after, you know... Lindsay gathers her strength. After she got that scar. I talked to her before. She wasn't very nice that time either. She's gotten so spiteful after she got hurt. She keeps saying she doesn't care. Hmm. Greetings, Valerie sighs. Everything is well, I hope. Ready for new orders. Valerie, we gotta talk. Been acting strange lately. If you are going to bring up that scene in the throne room, don't waste your breath. Evild completely deserved that speech. The captain of the guard said you're taking it out on random people. Valerie narrows her eyes. So the captain of the guard thinks I'm incapable of carrying out my duties to you and your subjects? Perhaps he should change his armor for a judge's mantle if he's so ready to declare such verdicts. Why did you think the Pascane next to the tavern entrance was about you? Who else could it have been about? That scribbler used to never leave me alone. Dogged my heels asking questions whenever I appeared on the street. And now... Valerie stops angrily and looks away. I know about the fight with the storyteller. And with Lindsay. The storyteller. What business of his, if I have anything left from the Order? Does he imagine I'm still carrying around Shellen's, Shalen's radiant face as a souvenir? 
As for Lindsay, she knows full well how her constant babbling about her book irritates me. Listen to yourself. Why all of this bile? Trying to help. Valerie twists her lips and looks away, as if she wants to end the conversation. <laughs> Wait and silently stare make uncomfortable amounts of eye contact. When the girl starts talking again, her voice sounds soft. Please forgive me, Melandrus. I understand your worries. My behavior over the last few weeks has indeed left much to be desired. I don't know why I'm doing these things. Lindsay believes you are concerned about the scar. So typical of her. Superficial opinion, superficial, superficial conclusion. Forgive me. It's difficult to admit I was wrong. Scatterbrained Lindsay is apparently right. The girl hesitates, lifts her hand and touches the scar on her face. Since it appeared, it's like the world around me has changed. Wherever I went before, my admirers, followers, and bards used to follow me around. Now it's like I'm invisible. Worse. And see how those I talk to trying I can see how those I talk to try hard not to look at the scar. It's like it undid me completely. Valerie stops again, absently running the tips of her fingers over the ugly scar on her face. She finally pulls her hand from her face and looks at you. I never seriously imagined what would happen if I lost my beauty. What? Okay, I won't get into it. I thought my actions would speak much louder than my appearance. Yeah, if only. But now I'm having doubts. In this and in everything else, I keep telling myself. You're letting your old beliefs cover your pain and disappointment. Let yourself grieve for what you've lost. Valerie looks down. I don't know how to be weak, Melandris. This is not what I was taught. The girl smiles sadly. You know, when they buried my grandmother, I didn't shed a tear. My mother was frightened for my cold heart, and my father thought this was another reason I should become one of Shellen's paladins. In fact, I simply don't know how to grieve over something I've lost. Valerie runs her fingers through her hair and sighs. Thank you. Now I know what to do. Since I don't know how to cry and wail, I'll do something useful. There are a lot of people I need to apologize to. Now is it? All right. All right, so here we are on the Shambling Steps. This is the town we forged uh, in the Camelands. And we are here to, where is it? Uh, meet with these artisans, which I'm guessing is Varask, the Wild Fist. An elderly half-orc looks at you without any friendliness. His clothes are covered with spots, and he, looks, and he looks exhausted and sickly. What are you looking at? Can't you see? Master Varask is not well. On my last legs. Go along. Leave me to my unhappy fate. Despite the cantankerous tone, there is certain confidence in the half-orc's voice especially in how proudly he spoke the word master. What is your name? Varask. Varask the Wild Fist, they call me. I was once an armor and weapons maker. I'm more of a corpse than a master now. Some evil people took everything from me. My family, my house, my craft, even took my tools. Everything. What happened? What happened? was a calamity. Going about my business, then I fell ill, cut down by fever. Been burning up for three weeks. 
that I would die more than once. A loyal merchant saved me. Kind soul, damn him. He saved me, but not for free. Everything I had is payment. With my precious work tools. The last of my treasures. I'm useless like this. What good am I to anyone? If I got my tools back, I'd be quite all right. I used to make such weapons and armor. Sold faster than I could make them. Without my tools, I'm useless. If you tried to use a regular hammer to forge like I do, and just ruin a good thing. I'd bend the tongs, wouldn't make anything worth putting my name to. That trickster got everything I need. Half-orc pierces you with his angry eyes. Listen, I can tell you got money. Maybe you need an armor? If you help me, I'll serve you. I'll make formid formidable weapons for you. Ones that just beg for enemy blood. First, I need my tools back. Very well. I won't distract you any longer. Half-orc harumphs brashly in response, but his eyes seem disappointed. Alright, so we got Varask's tools. No, oh, that's all we need to do here? Alright. Priest, traitor, Varask. Nazriel. Who's Nazriel? A stunning elven lady turns to you, her hair immaculate, her eyes deep water. Her beauty is like a bird of prey, she is also heavily armed. As she sees you, her superior air fades, leaving a charming smile on her face. How fortunate! Your grace, allow me to introduce myself. I am Nazriel the Weaponsmith. I can craft the deadliest weapons mortals can make, and I'd like to take the opportunity to pay my respects. As soon as I found out you were here, I dispatched one of my apprentices. But of course, the bonehead failed his mission. Would you like to hear an offer that would be to our mutual benefit? What do you have to offer? I hope to start serving you in exchange for your protection. You see, my creations are not to everyone's liking. In the lands where I come from, demand for artful blades is low. The heavier and cheaper ones are better for peasants. I had to swallow my pride and do such work merely to survive. I know that serving you will allow me to earn true recognition. I am offering you a contract. You'll provide me a workplace and all the necessary resources, and I shall fill your arsenal with perfect instruments of death. More, I will craft for you personally an amazing and deadly weapon for which there is no equal. I have long been looking for a warrior worthy of this masterpiece. All you need to do is sign the contract and place your first order. The elven woman shows you a leather case with a prepared contract. Do we have a deal? Tell me more about yourself. An artist. One of a kind. I create weapons. Not just pointy iron sticks, but real weapons. Nazriel raises her eyebrows meaningfully. Alas, not every domain appreciates high quality and expensive blades. I hope you'll be a generous patron and an appreciative connoisseur. Sure, I agree. Sounds like a good deal. Nazriel's eyes shine with excitement. She hands you a pen and paper. Thank you. Sign here, please, and here. Done. Right. No one can touch a court blacksmith. I'll order my apprentices to pack up my materials and take them to the new workshop, which you will kindly provide me with. As soon as I'm settled, I'll send one of my people to deliver your order. Very well. Um, yeah, sounds good. So, what do I need to do for Varask's tool? The weaponsmith's tools must be purchased from the vendor and returned to Varask. Oh, I'm guessing it's this guy right here. This trader? This guy? 50? That's... That's all it was. Alright, let's also grab six of these. Okay. Uh, here's your tools. The half-orc touches the tools tenderly, as if he can't believe his eyes. Then clutches them as tightly as he can. 
But I have them back. Really. Thank you so much. Well, now I'll be all right. I'll have food on the table. Get rid of this damn fever. Do what I promised my children. I'll keep my word. Give me a place to set up shop. And I'll work hard to repay. Cool. So we got two of them. Yeah, sounds great. Nice little uh, little detour. Here we are in the Southern Barrens. Here for, uh, we are meeting a devil. Ah, there he is. You! Kaliki folds her arms on her chest and glares at the devil. How rude, girl. Poor father doesn't seem insulted. I thought you were old enough to understand what a little meaning there is in such labels as good and evil. Didn't the evil devil help you and your sister? Did the followers of the good goddess despise you? Anyway, now is not the time for long conversations. I promised you a chance to get rid of the Soul Eater once and for all, without any fuss. That time is now. What's this noise, Naiho? Are you trying to annoy me by pounding rocks with a pot? You mean pounding, pounding the pot with rocks? I'm not doing anything. But I can hear it. Watch out! The sweet teeth! No! No! Ah, jeez. Why so upset, my dear? I used my mastery of illusions to fool the slow-witted soul eater. It will get its victim. Three of them, in fact. And it will believe that it captured and killed Canera. Then it will leave. And your problem is solved. Kaliki looks at you, eyes filled with despair. Please, Melandris, we have to save them. What if we summon Canera? The creature will be drawn to her and we'll be able to kill it. Then my sister. Oh, Nethus, I don't know. I don't know what to do. Follow your heart, of course. Isn't that the sort of trite wisdom you all love to repeat? Huh. All right. Finally, the neutral option actually isn't half bad. I can't put the lives of the sweet teeth above Canaris, or vice versa. Let it be decided by combat, come what may. All right, then. Let's hurry. Do something. That's awesome. Dreadful Soul Eater. Oh, it's only like level 15. Okay. Uh, Kaliki, what can you do? Oh, well, that dude's dead. Oh, and we've got more soul leaders. Oh, that's always fun. Come back. The sweet teeth. No. No. Uh, Kaliki drops to her knees and buries her face in her hands. Her shoulders are shaking with sobs. The surviving sweet teeth are clinging to each other, 
hesitating to come close. Finally, Kaligi stands up. Her face is pale. She looks with rage at the forefather. You! You and your plots! What plots, silly child? I only saved your sister. You really not give her a moment's thought? Kaligi grows even more pale. You are right in a way. Kanera is unlikely to blame you for this evil. Why? Why did everything have to happen this way? Kanera died because of me. Now my friends have suffered because of her decision to get involved with you. I can't carry this burden anymore. I'd rather just fall asleep and never wake up. Jesus Christ. Eh. What happened? Is it just me or did Kaliki summon me like it's the end and we need to pay off all our debts? Could someone explain what's going on? Anyone at all? Ah, I understand. I do. There really are two of them. How could we have missed it? Uh, nothing special happened. The forefather helped save you from the Soul Eater by feeding the sweet teeth to it instead. In our frowns fretfully. Let me guess, and now my sister blames me for everything. Tell her when you have a chance that I died once and I'm not about to do it again. And as for her daft friends, ah, uh, well, life is cruel. That's my girl. I'm glad to see such practicality in my offspring. I'll be even happier when I've spared you of the strictures imposed upon you by a certain divine power. A quick succession of thoughts flashed behind Canara's eyes. Oh, so that's what this was all about. Obviously. It would be madness and short-sighted to argue with a herald of Nethus himself. You're a chuckle from under the Iron Mask. But it would be pathetic to do nothing. You see, girl, and you, Melandris, my offspring is a valuable investment in this world, and I wish to secure my interests. For ages, I have reaped souls as a sickle reaps grain, turning even the most loyal followers from their service to the almighty gods. And I imagine that all-seeing Nethus decided to make a joke of me by taking the two souls that are mine by right. But everything will work out just fine. Soon enough, I will reclaim what's been taken from me. We are not your property. In your case, the matter must still be discussed. But in Kanera's case, the situation is quite clear. She made a contract with me for a lifetime of service. She is the only one who thinks a formal death followed by a resurrection can spare her from her contract. But in any case, it's not up to you to decide your fate. Um... So what's... What's the point of this plot? What's in it for you? To secure a valuable investment, of course. A mindless monster from Abaddon in hunting Canera was standing in my way. I had to be rid of it. But there's more, of course. What kind of a devil makes plans without some sinister ulterior motive? Cannot hope to oppose Nethus, who has taken my girls under his wing. But I can drive them to break the gods' conditions and thus lose his patronage. And I have succeeded. First, I lured them to these lands with the Disk of the Eclipse. I made them reveal themselves to everyone present. Kaliki just couldn't stay and watch her precious sweet teeth die, could she? To protect them, she only needed to bring Canera right before everyone's eyes. In any case, their vow of secrecy has been broken. Now we only need to deal with the second condition, and then I may receive what has been taken from me. Your treatment of Canera and Kaliki as property is unacceptable. I'm sorry, but I began their story, and I will be the one to finish it. Just you wait. Soon enough, I will take another turn in this game. Canera mumbles something with an independent air, and chuckles. Some story, isn't it? We need to discuss what happened. I'm surprised. 
Between everything that's going on in your lands, you find interest in such a trifle as devil's plots and the family troubles of two lowly tieflings. To be honest, I don't really find all that much interest in it, but there's experience in it for me, so get on with it. Did you understand what the forefather was trying to achieve? He explained everything, his devilish dedication to details. He considers his offspring a valuable investment, and me, well, I'm his property, and my death didn't annul the contract. But I suspect he has another motive. You know. Dame of Vic- What? The hell is that? Like the forefather lived for one thing, twisting the souls of believers and other deities and bringing them under the reign of Asmodeus. Hell does not forgive mistakes, and the forefather was well regarded there but his valuable investments slipped his grasp to be rescued by another deity. That must be unbearable for him. You'll do anything it takes to take us back, or me at least. Surprised you and Kaliki didn't get into a fight. Uh, we can't, thanks to Nethus. It was a wise decision, dividing us with a time plane wall. Seriously, the forefather is as devious as they come. Found a way to trick us both, but everything turned out all right in the end, I suppose. So what can we do? I'd say we should figure out how to stop the forefather from carrying out his plan. Stronger than you or I, it's only Nethus's power that keeps him at bay, for now. Only someone with a Deshwish would stand against a deity, or his herald. But for now, all we can do is wait. Right, let me talk to the other one. Canara sighs, of course, but cheer her up, would you? You must be all worked up. She's been through so much. After any, after everything that happened at the Camelon's Barrens, Kaliki has kept to herself, while acting as if nothing happened. This time she greets you with almost pointed nonchalance. Hello! Welcome! Right. Gotta talk about it. You have the right to answers. Ask. Did you get what the forefather was trying to achieve? Oh, yes. He couldn't help explaining everything in great detail. The patronage that Nethus gave us weighs heavily on him. Despite all his might, the forefather believes in rules. He imagines that if he forces us to break the deity's conditions, Nethus will turn away from us. Eh, maybe he's right. But in spite of everything, I am grateful for the taste of freedom I've received. I've had enough of pretending I want to bear my true name and not have to lie about everything all the time. I do apologize we couldn't save everyone. Like songs with missing verses. Whatever you do, they'll never sound the same. What the hell are you talking about? I understand why you made this decision. It'd be unfair to my sister to use her as bait for the monster, but I can't even think of letting the forefather feed the sweet teeth to that beast. We tried to help everyone without making any sacrifices or putting anyone's life above the others. Something in me rises against this decision, but the more I think about it, the more I see the wisdom in it. So what do we do now? I'm afraid all we can do is wait. The devil promised it's not yet the end, and that he'll make us break Nethus's other condition. I wish I knew how he's going to do that, because it means Canera and I will meet again. Right. Well, see you later. Kaliki's Poem. Shadows. I am not reading that, but I'll collect it because I am a pack rat. Kaliki's poem. Yep, there's another one. Ooh, got a bunch of honey. I will take that honey. Even more. Y'all want to tell me what's going on with all this honey you got stashed away? And the sweet syrup, and the chocolate, and the cider. Right, I'm confiscating all of your sweets. Ah, oh, must be winter. If only it was winter here, because it is about 100 degrees, that is 38C for people using reasonable systems. But that being said, we will call it here for today. 
Not sure what we will do tomorrow. Um, we'll probably go take care of assembling that militia in Varnhold, actually. But anyway, my name is Melandrius. I thank you for joining me today, and I will see you soon. Bye-bye.